So the Chicago Bulls want to trade Zach Levine, and Zach Levine certainly would like to be on a different NBA team right now. But rumors right now are suggesting that that actually being a reality is much more difficult than it might have seemed like at the time that these rumors about him getting traded in the first place started to come out. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. It might seem confusing as to why a player in Levine that is still young, that is such a talented offensive player, wouldn't have that much of a market. But Levine falls into a couple of different categories that have all kind of intersected at a point where Chicago might have a hard time finding a team for him in the first place and or not really get that much out of him. Now on the surface, it does seem strange, right? It, a guy that it's not like he's in his mid thirties. Yes, he's on a bigger deal. Yes, there's some, some issues with his game, but overall, Zach Levine is a talented player and a valuable one, clearly based off the last two contracts that he's gotten. He's someone that is valued around the league on a near max contract level capacity. And quite frankly, if he were to hit the free agency market right now, he probably would get either a max or something very close to it. But when it comes to actually trading him and when it comes to Chicago getting actual value, there's a couple of different issues here. First and foremost, right now, it's clear that the front office is just not on the same page with what everybody else is saying about their roster because we keep getting rumors and reports about the fact that they want like win now moves. They tried to go and get Darius Garland from Cleveland in exchange for Zach Levine. Like they are just doing some things that don't really make a ton of sense in terms of where their roster is, where their team is heading this season, as well as what Levine's value clearly is is around the league. Zach Levine is not on the Darius Garland level of value. He's not on the Tyrese Maxey level of value. He's at some point underneath that, but Chicago not only seems to be overvaluing him as an asset, but also is trying to go to teams and trade for stuff from teams that don't make any sense. And either that means they just don't really want to trade him, which I feel is unlikely at this point, given how clear it is that Levine would like to go somewhere else in the direction of the team, or they're just being stubborn and they want to try and get something that to everybody else's eyes makes absolutely no sense in exchange for Levine. Now, in terms of actually on the floor, again, it might seem confusing as to why it would be difficult to trade a still relatively young, really good offensive player in Levine. Well, part of the issues that Chicago was having as it seemed when he was playing in the beginning of the year are kind of some of the same issues that prevent him from being some kind of top tier trade asset. Because although, yes, he's a very good offensive player, certainly a very good spacer as well, he's not really on the level of like a top tier all-star level player in that way. Yet in Chicago, he's kind of being asked to be that main primary guy, or he just really wants to be that main primary guy that has the ball all the time. And if Zach Levine is someone that's running all of your offense for you, then you're just not going to be that good of a team unless as they did a few seasons ago, you have this incredible infrastructure around him where you do have someone like DeMar DeRozan that for a little bit there was averaging MVP level numbers a couple years ago and you have this great defensive infrastructure around him. Unless you're in that situation, it's going to be difficult to have Zach Levine be your best player and have you win a lot of basketball games. And so there's not a lot of teams out there right now that are looking for someone like Zach Levine to be their best player. Now, yes, there is a scenario in which he goes to a contending team Team and he's the second or the third best guy and he's kind of like a like a secondary or a tertiary scorer and that does make a lot of sense for his skill set because he can play off the ball because he is such a good spacer but that's not the role that he's been showcased in in Chicago for the last couple of seasons and so it's hard for those kinds of teams to envision him in that role on their team. And so if you're a, a contending team or a semi-contending team, that's a difficult player to try and integrate into your roster in the middle of the season. It might seem easy because he can shoot and he can score, but it can disrupt the entire offensive ecosystem of your team. And if you're not doing that for a guy that's a clear 100%, this is our guy kind of player, it's difficult to, to kind of integrate that for you in the middle of the year. And when you kind of add that into the fact that he is on this massive multi-year contract as well, and there's there's some lingering like knee issue, lower body injury, uh, you know, ankle stuff. Like there's a lot of stuff with Zach Levine that's just kind of lingering from an injury standpoint. And for a player that relies as much on acceleration and explosiveness as he does, that's definitely a concern. When you combine that with the contract and, and some potential concerns about his longevity on that contract, he quickly becomes a player that is just not as valued around the league as his talent might suggest. Individually, Zach Levine is an extremely talented offensive player and someone that can do a lot of really good stuff for you. But when you think about what that looks like as the number one option, when you think about trying to integrate that player into a potential title team as the second or even the third option in the middle of the season for a guy that's on a, a, a gigantic multi-year deal that maybe has some longevity concerns in terms of how it could directly impact his, his play on the floor and his play style, all those factors together make this incredibly difficult, which is 
why we've seen in these rumors, Chicago's not only having a hard time finding good value for him around the league, but they're having a hard time finding any kind of team around the league to trade for him. You can say that Zach Levine is worth this amount of stuff. You can say that he's a good asset because of how good of a player he is, but you still have to find a team that he fits on and a team that's willing to give up a lot of stuff for him. And there's just not a lot of those teams out there. There's certainly not very many obvious ones. One of the, one of the places I kind of go to here for Levine is a team like Orlando, for example, that is clearly very good defensive infrastructure. They've got Paolo, they've got Franz, but there are times where they need a little bit more of a punch in the backcourt. They need a little bit more of a dynamic on-ball score or someone that can create for you in ball screens and importantly fit alongside both Franz and Paolo as an off-ball spacer. And that is an interesting and intriguing fit for me, but Orlando has already been really, really good to begin the season and relative to expectations coming into the year. I don't know why they would want to go out and mess with that, even if theoretically, yes, they do need a little bit more punch in the backcourt, although some of their guys have been hurt uh, to begin the season that normally would fill those roles. Even though you can point to that and say, this is a need for that team, that doesn't mean that they need to go out and fill that need and fix that right now and certainly doesn't mean that they view Zach Levine as the answer to that potential problem in Orlando. They could still have a really good season this year, win 45 or 50 games, and then go into the offseason knowing this is the thing that we need to solve rather than 30 games into the year trading a lot of stuff or some stuff in exchange for Zach Levine and potentially messing with what clearly is a situation that's going really, really well in Orlando right now. And outside of that, if you look around the league... You guys can tell me in the comment section. It's really difficult for me. I mean, maybe Toronto wants to go out and try and find a, a backcourt guy because they've got their own issues. They would keep Siakam. They would keep Scotty Barnes and try and turn some of their other assets into Zach Levine, I guess. The Lakers are always going to be a potential option and amongst contenders, I th or at least semi-contenders. I do think that the Lakers are a decent possibility. I think that's a team that Levine would like to go to. So that makes things easy. And you could do, you know, D'Lo and some stuff in exchange for, uh, you know, Zach Levine and D'Lo can go somewhere else not end up in Chicago. But again, you're, you're disrupting a lot in the middle of the year for a team with the Lakers that really feels like they have an identity. And D'Lo's been good for them. Like he's been good for them to begin the year. And so is, does Zach Levine represent enough of an upgrade when you consider the, the salary, the contract, the injury stuff, potentially long-term and some moodiness at times in Chicago as well? Does all of that, is all that worth trading for when your team is kind of already doing good things? And that really, that's the core issue right now with Zach Levine. As you can pick apart his offensive game and his fit on some certain teams and the contract and the injuries there really isn't an obvious team out there right now there's no team that Chicago can go to and say you know what we know that you guys are going to be interested in Levine we're going to go look somewhere else that team doesn't exist and so when that's the case Chicago has an incredibly difficult time figuring out engaging exactly what Levine's value is because they don't have a team that's worth that's willing to trade for him as well as it's hard for them to increase that value because they can't pit a couple of teams against each other and of course the last piece of this puzzle that we talked about in the beginning of the video is the front office has to understand what direction they want to go in. I think it's clear to myself and, and most other people that watch the Bulls that they do need to be going in a completely different direction. They need to trade away Levine, DeRozan, Vucevic, and see what they have here with Kobe White. Try and get some draft assets. They've got Io. They've got Patrick Williams. They've got Kobe White. Maybe try and build around a couple of those guys and see where you are in a year, in two years. Trading Zach Levine for, you know, D'Angelo Russell or something like that doesn't make any sense for them. And even though, yeah, it would be cool if they could get like Darius Garland and Tyrese Maxey, those guys, that's not going to happen. So at this point, one, I think I, I would hope at least now it's clear why they're having so many issues trading away Zach Levine and finding a team for him. But I also think that it's clear that the, the front office's mindset has to change if this is going to get done. I hope that it does. I want a fresh start for Levine and I want Chicago to start going in a different direction. But right now, it's honestly looking pretty difficult.